the nice thing about uh, being camping on Crown Land is there's tons of firewood everywhere. As you can see, these big trees and even the smaller trees, they've got all the branches still attached to them. If this was a Gonquin, now all these branches would be told, these trees would be totally devoid of any branches. They'd be all ripped off. But uh, the reason why I'm going this way is because you see there's a birch tree right there and they had uh, oh see there's even some on the ground but that one had uh, the skin peeling off the bark skin <laughs> had the bark peeling off so it was uh, I want to take off a little bit of it still gonna be wet but at least it wasn't on the ground so it should be able to still take to a flame there's more birch uh, over there but this one as you can see they've got pieces ready to fall off. It's gonna take a few of those. It's actually one that fell down, so I could probably take some off of this this one as well. But actually, you know what? You could tell someone had come here and taken birch, uh, the birch bark off, because it got stripped right there. <clears throat> I don't often like to take it off trees. You know what? I'm not gonna bother. Um, I don't like to take it off bark right off the trees because it's their protection and this is just literally just coming coming off but thing is with birch trees oops there's a frog look at that huh. look at that guy oh he's gone oh, he doesn't want to be dinner it's got to be a little cold for the frogs oh he's gone the little leopard frog okay let me get some birch bark and uh and then we're gonna collect some wood. Okay, I've finally gotten out of my dry suit. <coughs> um, I was hoping it was gonna stop raining. It did for a bit, but uh, you can see it's starting up again. I collected some firewood, as you can see there. And here's my fire pit, and I've gotten some really fine wood and some smaller uh, medium-sized pieces. And then I'll got some bigger, thicker pieces, which I have a uh, hatchet, so I can actually cut and split and get into some of the dry stuff. Okay, let's get the fire started. I am gonna start use the birch bark, but I don't really think there's gonna be enough. Um, I did bring some fire starters, so I'm gonna use that as well too. Um, I figure things are gonna be really wet, and I don't want to uh, spend forever trying to get them to. So I've got this, um, it's, it was uh, given to me, let's just see here, we can get it to focus on here. There we go. It's, it looks like it's cardboard and I think it's uh, coated in paraffin wax. So I'll try this one out. I've got another one from the dollar store. So I'll try that. I'll use that in combination with the birch bark. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'm just gonna put uh, it sticks down just to give it a base and not only give it a base it'll, it'll pro provide uh, spaces for for air to flow through from the bottom this should be good let's put that there that there Watch your birch work I'll keep some more for tomorrow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to light it and then I'm going to start putting some of the fine stuff in little by little and as it catches fire I'll start putting more in. Especially the fine stuff like this. So let's get it lit and see if we can get, get a fire going. So we can light that first. There we go, it's lit. All right. Let's add some thin pieces.
progress. We're getting there. Oh yeah. Let's slowly start putting some of the bigger pieces now. Again, they're not big. They're just a little thicker than the ones that are really fine. So we finally got it going. Had to coax it a bit. Um, I had to put another one of those fire starters. It didn't burn that long. And, uh, and so I'll, once I put the other one in, it slowly got better and better and now I've just stacked a whole bunch of thicker wood on there and now it's catching like no problem. So that's good. So what I'm going to do is now that that's going, I'm going to get the stove fired up and I'm going to get supper going. Alright, I've got uh, a jet boil. Um, so the cool thing is everything fits in nicely in the pot. So I've got uh, the actual stove and a fuel canister right inside the pot. So this just screws on to the base, which is the fuel canister. There are legs for the base, which makes it more stable. Stick that on there. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. I might have to adjust this rock. It's not totally flat. There we go. I think that's better. And then the pot itself, the bottom, uh, ends up being like a bowl. You can use it as a bowl, or you can eat just out of the pot, which quite often I do. Um, if there's someone else, you can always give them that. And this just rotates on there, and you fire it up, and then away you go. And then there's your cover. So I've got um, a few meals. i got to go look in the barrel and see uh, what we're going to have tonight. It's starting to get dark. Um, so I've got a few meals. Uh, let me turn that sideways. I've got a double chili meal. So yeah, I do eat chili. Quite uh, standard in the back country. I'm going to eat that with rice. I think I'm going to have that tonight. I've got uh, an Asian noodle with uh, dehydrated veggies and meat. And I've also got a sriracha meal with noodles, with rice noodles. Anyhow, yeah, so I think tonight I'm gonna have chili because it's two meals and I'd rather not have it back to back. So just for a variety, I'll uh, have half of it tonight and maybe half of it, the other half tomorrow night and then I'll have the other stuff uh, for breakfast. And yes, I'm not having a typical breakfast. These meals are, uh, other than this packaged one, um, they're meals from this year that just didn't get used. And we don't want it to, to be hanging around for more than a year, otherwise it'll start to get stale. So I'm basically, at, usually at the end of the season, um, I'll, I'll be finishing a lot of the old meals. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so there you go. We've got a nice fire going. And jet boil is also fired up. We've got probably, I don't know, close to a liter of water in there. So what I'm going to do is, in that mug, there's the minute race. I don't know to see it. Oh, there we go. Just don't have enough lights here. There we go. And I'm just going to pour water in there and just cover it up. And that will come up, uh, hydrate really quickly. And then I'm going to put the chili in the pot and then simmer it for a bit until it's uh, rehydrated. And I'll just put the rice and the chili together. The nice thing about the jet boil is that it's one of the fastest uh, boiling on the market, so it won't take very long before it gets uh, to a boil, and uh, I'll get cooking. The fire is turning out wonderful. Uh, just keep adding wet wood, and it catches and then burns, so it's all turning out nicely. 
So there's the chili. I think I added a little bit too much water. It's okay. I could use the fluid. It's funny, I thought I didn't have enough water. I poured the extra water. I brought a little thermos. <clears throat> Let me show you here. Just a small little thermos. And uh, I figured tomorrow and the day after it's going to get really cold. So I figured I'd have some hot, um, either hot chocolate or something hot um, in there so that I can drink throughout the day or have it at lunch. Anyhow, like I said, I, I poured the extra water in there. I thought um, I didn't have enough here and I would just pour some more in. But it looks like I've got a little bit... Actually, eh, not too bad, actually. Let me just try a little bit here. Hmm. It's pretty much right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw the rice in there. it all up. Should be ready to eat. Mm. It's getting pretty dark. Anyhow, supper is ready. And I've got chili and rice. So, time to dive in. See how this tastes. Hmm. That's going to be good and hearty. Mm. The nice thing about eating on the jet boil is that it's got a fabric covering so you can hold it and it'll keep your hands warm. You know what? It's starting to get windy. Calmed right down and there was no wind at all. It was nice. <clears throat> but it seems like the wind's picking up. The water is just, the rain is just going sideways. And I'm just trying to finish up here and I'm going to try to get into the hammock, but hopefully the um, the tarps will manage okay. Because uh, one of the pegs came out earlier and uh, the tarp is just being flung all, all, all which way just because of the wind. Some of the gusts are really, really strong. I didn't know that the, the wind was going to be this strong based on the weather, but uh, hopefully it doesn't get any worse. Now I'm kind of regretting that I uh, set up camp right by uh, the lake. That wind is strong. And I'm not worried about this hammock, but I'm worried about the tarps. Um, this one that ha that covers the hammock is okay, because most of it is attached to trees. There are a few pegs that can come undone, but the other one... Um, it's mainly pegged to the ground, and there's a good chance they can come out um, if the wind continues all night. So, anyhow, yeah, I'm not, I still got all my clothes on. I want to get in the sleeping bag and get comfortable. And uh, it is getting cold. All right, let me get uh, organized here. All right, I'm comfortably in my sleeping bag now. This sleeping bag uh, is a minus 11. Eureka down bag and man it feels heavenly right now um, <laughs> there's a lot of cold air coming in through different gaps in this uh, hammock so I'm glad that I have the extra warm uh, sleeping bag so you can hear you can see me swaying back and forth that's the wind buffeting the the hammock and I'm cross-sectional to the wind I mean, if I didn't have that uh, tarp out, I'm sure I'd be flung a lot more. And I, I feel like I'm in a, like, kind of like in a waterbed. Everything is kind of shaking. Wow. All right, <clears throat> I am going to, I was going to read, but I am comfortable and it's like nine o'clock now, almost nine o'clock. Yep, it's 10 to nine. And uh, I have a feeling if I pull out the book, 
I'm gonna probably fall asleep. So, good night. We'll see you in the morning. This is crazy. I'm being rocked by the wind, and then it just goes like dead silent. It's kind of eerie, it's weird. And the other thing that's uh, concerning is that uh, I turn on the phone uh, to see if I've got signal, and I do. Um, and, the, and, the, and the worrisome thing is that some of the people had said that there's tornado warnings. And uh, that's not good. So that would explain why the wind has been kind of fierce. It went from total dead calm in the early evening to this wind, crazy wind, and crazy gusts. So hopefully uh, I'm not close to the tornado warning because I don't know where it is. Can you hear that? I don't know how much it's picking up, but... Alright. Signing off again. This is that. Just trying to capture one of these events so you can hear what's going on. It just rattles everything and it's kind of freaky. You can hear the wind gusts as well too. Good morning. It is not really wake up time. It's uh, quarter to three. Um, it sounds like the wind has died significantly, not as violent as it was uh, earlier. But uh, I've been weak. Well, um, I woke up to a lot of rubbing. I don't know if you can hear it. Of course, it's not happening now, but every once in a while, I hear it, um, pretty harsh rubbing. Something is, of course, rubbing together uh, out there. I don't know if it's a rope, the strap, or the tarp on, on the strap. I'm not sure exactly. Just don't want to leave it because if it keeps rubbing, maybe it could wear through or something like that. I'm not sure. So I'm going to get out. <clears throat> my little cocoon it's definitely gotten uh, cooler um, when I went to bed it was pretty hot and now it's uh, slightly cool so it's definitely a drop in temperature it's comfortable nonetheless but uh, it's been a noisy sleep I've been kind of tossing and turning um, it was just loud with the wind and, and, the, and you know the swaying of the, the hammock so um, anyhow, I'm going to go out and check to see what's going on and uh, try to go back to sleep. Alright, I just got back in the hammock. Oh man, it's significantly colder. Oh, it is cold. I can see my breath out there. Um, anyhow, I don't exactly know what the problem was, what the rubbing was. But that was uh, one thing that was annoying. The sound uh, woke me up. I think it's better now. I'm not sure. I tightened up the tarp a little bit. It was a little loose just from all the heavy wind. Uh, that was probably stretching the rope a bit and pulling at it. But um, yeah, I didn't really see what the cause is. So I'm not sure. And I haven't heard it so far. So hopefully I've, uh, I've fixed the problem. It's still 
pretty early in the morning. <laughs> Might be three o'clock now, so I'm gonna tuck back into the sleeping bag and see if I can nap for a few more hours and and then I'll think about getting up. Alright guys. See you later. Good morning. It is cold. Oh, got my gloves on. Fingers are nice and cold. But uh, the tarp managed uh, last night and survived. Um, and then what I was really worried about was this tarp. I adjusted this corner last night because it was attached all the way down here. Uh, but because of the wind was so strong, it got ripped right out so I brought it in a lot closer and uh, and I managed to survive last night but man the wind was coming straight from the north and it was strong and uh, wow yesterday between the heavy rainfall and the thunder then the lightning um, it, it was nuts One of the nice things about this time of year is oops, garbage. It's bringing a, a thermos, especially when it's chilly in the morning. Looks like it leaked a little bit, and to have a little bit to have and to have some hot water to drink. Question is, is it still hot? Might just be warm. Yeah, it's still pretty warm. Hmm. I peed three times last night. <laughs> Once about, I think it was around 11. It was, that one was pretty urgent. And then another time at uh, 3 or 2.30. And then of course this morning, so. Eliminated a lot of water. Some birds flying there. Ah, feels good. You always get so parched in the morning. It's nice to have something warm to drink right off the bat. I'm gonna go get some wood and try to get the fire going, and then I'll get uh, breakfast going. Man, my fingers are going numb just just drinking this. Okay, that's it for now. That was good. All right, time for a fire.
Well, that didn't take too long. Got a bunch of wood split. Um, but now I'm gonna need some tinder, so I'm gonna go into the forest and uh, grab some branches. The good thing with the wind is that it uh, has dried a lot of the stuff. Um, like my tarps are pretty much completely dry. So I imagine a lot of the small branches will pretty much be dry as well too. So I'm gonna grab a bunch and then we'll get the fire started. So this is perfect. I was gonna get some off of a tree, but I mean, this tree's already come down and this stuff is already all dry. You can see it's like uh, pretty much, it's a white color and uh, the water's all dried off of it. So I'll take a bunch of this and then I'll start the fire with it. I like all the stuff that are fine, that are, you know, pretty skinny. Those will take, I mean, that won't have any kind of water on it. And if I take a bunch of that, they'll take uh, to a mat pretty quickly. Okay, it's still pretty windy. So what I decided to do before I start the fire, I'm gonna just readjust the tarp. It started moving it already so that it will block the wind so that I'll be, ha I'll be able to have a nice little warm spot with the fire. Okay, I think we're finally making some progress. So the thing is, I don't need uh, rain protection anymore. It's just uh, wind protection. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I just need to get the this side of the tarp high enough so it doesn't uh, get caught in the flames of the fire. I, uh, I trimmed down the tree and it looks like it's pretty much high enough. Let's just give it a shot. Yeah, that should do it. Perfect. All right. So I got some fine stuff here. Just gonna snap that together. Got a little bit of the birch bark from yesterday. Just throw that underneath there with some of the birch bark. And hopefully that will take with one match. No one match wonder. But let's see how this goes. Not too bad. Nature provides. Just gotta know what to look for, where to get it. Tools help, and then you can get your fire started no problem. Doesn't matter what kind of conditions. There we go. That feels nice. Ah. 
Took a little bit of time, but now totally worth it. Oh, that feels good. Now that the fire is nicely started, it's time to feed the machine. Let's see what we've got this morning. So we're not gonna do chili again because we did that last night. I can have the spicy Asian noodle with dehydrated veggies and meat, or I can do sriracha. Sriracha noodles. So, same idea. Bunch of um, dehydrated uh, veggies. Looks like there's pepper, carrots, mushrooms, shredded chicken, um, peas, green onion. And then I'll, I'll mix that up with uh, rice noodles. Rice noodles are really handy because they, they don't take very much time to cook. Um, they're pretty quick. And you can get them at any, actually any grocery stores now, you can get them at Asian stores. And uh, they're much faster than um, cooking like uh, spaghetti noodles. So just for, for a change. So it's always nice to change your diet and try different uh, meals. So, hmm. I don't know. I think I'll do the Asian noodles. This is kind of soupy, and this being that it's cold, it'd be nice to get some um, hot, savory noodles and and uh, soup into me as well too. So let's cook this up, and then let's uh, get breakfast on the go. Oh, the fire feels nice. Water level has definitely uh, been coming up more with the rain. So it should be interesting to see what the falls and the river will be like. I'd imagine it's going to be pretty much gushing.